Salamta, Salamta, Royal Ethiopian greetings here. Here, this is Ras Ayadonis Tafari, Ethiopian Royal Order, Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, right here. Here, 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 Afro American here, Ethiopian, all right, Ethiopian in the original sense of Ethiopian. Now, why am I going to call this video? I'm going to call this video Amhara's Warned. The Amharas warned by Haile Selassie. The Amharas were warned by Haile Selassie. You know, we talk about the rebellion, the so-called revolution, and who did what. One reason why many of them don't like that book, that emperor book by Kapuczynski. We're not, we're not co-signing Kapuczynski's BS, but that book there does point to something that it's them horrors that be a crushing and awesome responsibility now i want to show you something right here this is a clip from back in the 50s right it was a group of exchange i guess students were speaking on different subject matters let's see if we can we're gonna to have to go into our email there we go right there here we go all right, so let's open this video. You say that your people right. came down from the Middle East. You are not native African. No, not at all. Ethiopian. As a matter of fact, we don't have the Negro blood at all. And uh, we migrated from uh, the Semitic type of Saudi Arabia and Yemen and the countries just away from the uh, Red Sea. And the, I mean, the origin could be said that some people dra drafted and came to the northern part of Ethiopia. And then they migrated inwards, and time went on. The okay, now, you already heard that part. I don't want to play too much of this right here, because um, a brother in, Halop Haliasus, you know, he sent this to I, and, you know, we had even uh, had a couple of clips. I think it's a brother named Mesfin, this, this individual. I heard later on he recanted some of his statements, but this is a big statement right there, where Mesfin, I think he's an exchange student, um, it's a very interesting interview, if you can see the whole thing. I think it's out there. It was, um, I forget the exact name of it, but we quoted him something. There was something he said about being, you know, the Israelite connection with Ethiopia. And there's some facts to what he's saying. He's not really the best spokesperson for, you know, what is being said right here, here, here. He's not really the best spokesperson. Um, you can see he... He has a general grasp of English, and then there's these um, these these white girls or South African girl, and, and these white girls there who start to ask him some questions. And one basically says, "Well, you know," she flips it around on him. She says, "Well, you know, I'm going to um, what she says. I'm going to answer your question, <laughs> you know, that way there after you answer my question and basically she never answers his question and he really doesn't get his question out but they're asking him right here and you see at the top right here it says this is how Amharas want Ethiopian history to be taught right here let's bring this up right here right this is how I'll say modern day Amharas want Ethiopian history to be taught because when we look into the times of Kedemah, we had Selassie in his times, he shows Shu, who's the blessed only potentate, right, the king of kings. In his times, this is not the way it was. I'm going to show a couple exhibits right here, and there's more on this particular reason, man, but we just want to share a little bit. They have uh, Peter Tosh playing in the background right here, so we don't want to play that too much, you know, and maybe get a... Uh, um, a strike or whatever, but we would like you to hear what he's saying a little bit more, just a little bit more. Instead and, uh, instead and then, the Hamitic cases from the bordering, the, from the south and from Sudan and things like that, from the countries But if you, Africa, excuse me for interrupting, but if you don't have Negro blood, then, uh, this is news to me, the Ethiopians, I would think, wouldn't have any particular feeling about uh, race relations in other parts of Africa. We don't at all do Okay, stop right there. You see how she set this up. That's the interviewer. Like I said, it's a bunch of exchange students. They had a couple of brothers from Africa, you know, in addition to this Mesfin here. Now, Mesfin, you know, I think he really tried to express something, but the way he expressed it just, it falls short of what the teaching of his majesty, Haile Selassie, was. And also for us over here as black Americans, Afro-Americans in the West, and our ancestors from the time of um, Marcus Messiah Garvey, that, that, that 
John the Baptist type, John the Ethiopian baptized, if we go back to all that Garvey was saying, and also to ones even before him, like the Black American, Afro American Reverend James Morris Webb. He's he's one of those prophets, you know, of old. You see, what we have like the Old Testament, you know, Malachi. Then we have Matthew, but between there we have Maccabees, and that's a part of the history of the Bible most people don't know. And there's a large part of our history and our connection, even as. Afro-American Rastafari and Rastafari, just universal Rastafari, especially over here in the West. Hail up to the brothers in Jamaica, you know, that lighthouse of Rastafari as well. But this is the half of the story that people don't know, that the Amharas were warned. And this is interesting when we look at the politics or politics that are going on today. But we trace it to the King of Kings, what the King of Kings so said. Now, once we let this go right here, let's take a, uh, take a screen a, a screenshot of this. Now she asked him, said, well, you don't have any, any Negro blood. You hear her say, well, that's news to her. Now, once we kind of move this off of here, it's going to, it's going to, there you go. It's going to fly up right here. So we're starting out right here with this right here, Ethiopian, right? This is a learn to pronounce.com site. Now, another thing they've done is they've changed up the definitions. It's almost like he is going from the Zondervan definition. This is a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, they will go to the Zondervan. We're going to show that as well as show what the warning was. What's this warning that Haile Selassie I had given to the Amharis, right? And this whole tribal politics. Actually, Amhara is not a tribe properly, if you even know. Now, ones will say, hey, I'm a black American over here. How can we be saying these things? Well, it's our ancestors were the ones that even developed the whole thing, concept of Ethiopianism. Ethiopianism is something that came from over here, reaching out, stretching our hand forward. As it says in the scriptures that princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God, right? You know those prophecies in the Bible about Ethiopia and the Israelites? Some very, very interesting prophecy talking about the Israelites, we over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Now, our ancestors going back to the, the, the 20s, about 100 cent, a century ago, right? The Roaring Twenties and even before had already been studying, right? Researching, making those connections from the available documentation of the time. Now, a lot of this documentation, like the King of Kings says, that the young people, you know, are susceptible to this propaganda that's going on. Let's see if we can bring this up right here so you can see this. Let's see if we have this right here. The young people and the propaganda, right? The propaganda right here. There's a, there we go, right there. It says, these young people face a world beset, beset with the most effectively organized, effectively organized program of deceptive propaganda and of thinly screened operations ever known. All right, Hala Selassie, King of Kings of Ethiopia. Now, I want you to just, you know, take note, take note of what's being said here. These young people now, the exact date of the speech will be interesting at what particular time his imperial majesty uttered, uttered these words right here. But we can definitely see in our times that this is true, very true. So here, let's return up here. So I just want to share that right there. Now, let's first of all just touch on this whole tribal thing, right? Tribalism, all right? Here we go. His Majesty says, above all, we must avoid the pitfalls of tribalism. If we are divided among ourselves on tribal lines, we open our doors to foreign intervention. What's interesting is that the ancient Israelites got caught up on tribalism in the past. They were tribes, but they got caught up on the ism and schism. And that also opened ancient Israel of the scriptures to the foreign intervention, as we know. You know, we had the Syrians, the Babylonians, you know, we had the Greeks, and then we had the Romans, right? Foreign intervention and its potentially harmful consequences. Kedamawi Haile Selassie, this is the words of his majesty, right? So when we look at the Ethiopia situation today, we can't blame, right, the blameless emperor, the king of kings. A lot of people, they like to blame, blame the blame Haile Selassie, the first crowd, there's a lot of them especially careless Ethiopians, you know, at home over there and even many over here abroad. 
because Matsi warned them, right? He he warned them of this, right? And he also warned the Amharis, right? Above all, we must avoid the pitfalls of tribalism if we are divided among ourselves along tribal lines. We open our doors to foreign intervention and its potentially harmful consequences. Now, some would say even today, nowadays, the popular thing is that tribe is is offensive. Uh, some even say tribe is racist. Well, ask our brothers and our, you could say, kin and relations over here in these here America, the, the indigenous people, the Native American, you know, the American, the Native Americans, you know what I mean? that are pseudonymously called Indians because Columbus, Christopher Columbus was lost, right? So then they get to be called Indians because he confused India over there and he called these, that's what they call the West Indies because of his confusion, right? But the Native Americans, tribe is a federal, is a particular federal standing, right? And they know how important it is, but still, you know, tribe has been used by Europeans in racist and racial ways. Now imagine everything that the European has done, especially this, you know, end time Gentile over the past 400 years. In that case, we wouldn't, we wouldn't use, use um, sun, moon, stars, water, air, land. We, we, we have to not use anything by his abuses. So we have to recognize what Matthew is saying right here. Not that there's not tribes. Or ethnicities, ethnicities, nationalities, peoples, right? But to be what the key word right there is divided, right? That's the key word, divided. We are divided. Now, the Amhara is really a class, right? I'd like to bring some others on this platform to just vibes with I and I and I. You know, I hear love to Ross Seymour, I and I duly elected, you know, this year, 2023, you know, chaplain of the Ethiopian World Federation, you know. We be just fives and also, you know, first international vice president, you know, Ross Obadiah to reason on this, because this is very important for us at, you know, abroad here in the diaspora, as we look at what's going on, you know, at home and particularly zooming in on Ethiopia because of the King of Kings and because of the prophecy. Yes. Yeah, so right here, it says above all. So the same quote right there, right? The same quote harmful, harmful consequences. This is a very good book he'll love to call Phil Potts Naftali. I got to get, I think he has a, um, a revised edition. I think there's another edition he has of this. A very, very good book. You know, like how he lays the basic tenets of the face, you know, because Rastafari is, you know, many may come in his name, but not with the teaching of his majesty. Give us the teaching of his majesty. We don't want no devil's philosophy. Time to clean house. Now, here is the Zondervan. A lot of the 70 and post-70 AD Hebrew Israelites, some refer to them as black Hebrews. Sometimes some of them don't like that, black Hebrew Israelites. But the Hebrew Israelites of 70 AD, the one Westerners, the one Westerners, all right? The one Westerners, they love this one here, the Zondervan. The Zondervan concordance right here. Let's just read it, Ham. Remember in the clip that we just shared, um, Mesfin was talking about somehow not being of the Hamitic, and the Hamitic people came from here and there, and they came across from, you know, Arabia and Yemen. Well, there's some truth to the migrations of the ancient Israelites. There's, there's truth, and the Israelites, we do and did have a kingdom in the highlands called Ethiopia. That's what the prophecy in the Psalms 87 verse 4, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. There's a, there's a significant prophecy, are you not as the children of Ethiopia to me, or children of Israel? All right, so Ham right here says, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. You probably heard a lot of the Israelites go over this quote right here. Read, he became the progenitor, progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, not the Negroes, not the Negroes, you know, right? Because we are identified over here with this, um, this Roman, that's Roman, it comes from the Roman or Latin nomenclature or pseudonym or byword, what the Bible says in the prophecy, right? That identifies I and I and we, Isaiah, you know, in the prophecy in, 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 in Deut Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus, Leviticus 26, 
right? The Negroes, the blacks, Negroes, right? But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, repeat, Ethiopians. So when we come to them in one-to-ones, even some of the Rastas and others, you know, have tried to verse with some of the Israelites. And I tell you a lot of you, you know, Rastafari brothers and sisters, come, make we study, man. You know, the teaching of his majesty, you know, we need to study to show ourselves approved. You know what I mean? Most ones and ones that you, you, you're not on that level. And many of ones and ones because they're not able to properly, you know, decipher the scripture to the glory of his majesty. You know, we're bringing shame to that good name by which we are called, even that new name. Let's study to show ourselves approved. Right, so here they say not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Genesis ten six to twenty, right? And he, his indecency when his father lay drunk and brought a curse upon him. Now the Bible don't talk about no indecency. All this is from the latter day, you know, um, Jews who call themselves Jews, pseudo Talmudic references. Talmud just means teaching. So not all the Talmud or the teaching is bad, but give us a teaching of his magic. We don't want no devil's philosophy. So a lot of this is based on devil's philosophy right here. Right? You see the part where it says not the Negroes, and they really go ham. <laughs> they go ham on this particular verse right here, or this particular quote from the Zonavan. The Zonavan Concordance. And here's another clip exhibit. You know what I mean? So when many ones talk about Ethiopia and and are you not as the children of Ethiopians and and make this historical, right? Factual evidence documented connection, even with our ancestors over here a hundred plus years ago. Many of these latter day these youths, you know, they have a zeal. Many of the Hebrews like have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge or it's not according to epinosis, full knowledge. They say. Not the Negroes. And here, it looks like the Bible, right? You, when, when you see this, you think it's the Bible. No, it's not the Bible. It's a Bible concordance. A latter-day Gentile Bible concordance. I think it's... Oh, I looked at my research on that. We're going to have to touch on this in the whole reason, man, right? But how does this connect, right? How does this connect with what Mesfin is saying, right? Mesfin is saying, right? Now, there's some truth. I'll say this once again. There's some truth to what Mesfin is saying right but he's he's not quite able to you know he he's obviously speaks some hark and his english is not too you know up to it you know but he's bright or as he even said clever you know in his own way there is some truth to it and what we are concerned about is that one would throw out the proverbial baby with the bath water mm mhm the bath water definitely is dirty, especially when we look at what Mesfin said from today's point of view, you know, and today's politics. That's why ones are running with that particular clip right there. But remember that His Majesty warned, right? He warned the Amharis specifically, specifically. What basically happened is that many Amharis betrayed Kadamawi Hala Selassie. That's what happened, right? And some... Some investigators even find that there were members of the nobility as well, you know, that betrayed Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, you know, and not to betray his magic, but, but betrayed Ethiopia, right, leading to the, 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 the consequences that happened from post-1975, even to this present day, right? You, we, have to, we have to get to the root you know, not deal with the symptoms. Many ones in the Ethiopia politics are trying to deal with the symptoms, both at home and abroad, but not getting to the root causes and addressing the root causes and repenting from the root causes. Here we have Acts chapter 13, verse 1, where it reads, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch or Antiochia, right? That's uh, roughly where Turkey is today, Constantinople. You know, Istanbul, I think they call it. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Shimon and, and Simeon. That was called, and who? And Simeon, Shimon, Simeon, right? That was called nigger. Oh, nine, two Gs make it nigger. One G make it Niger. Okay. Interesting how the, the G can have a J and a G sound in this English. But this is the important point right here. Here we have this word Niger or nigger, 
right? Notice the phonetics seem to lend the pronunciation to nig, nig er, nig er, right? That's how it says. You see the phonetics right there. Let me highlight this, right? There we go. Nigger, nigger, right? Nigger, right? Actually, if you read it in the Greek, this is the Greek up here. If you read it in the Greek, it basically does say nigger. <laughs> but then they, they play games with us, you know what I mean? It's like English is a weird language, a Frankenstein language, you know? You remember in school, you see a word, they teach us the letters, we learn to say the ABCs, and then we're reading a word one way, say, no, we don't say it like that, you say it like this, and you'd be like, well, why don't you write like this? And if you write like that, they'll say you have poor spelling, you don't know how to spell. Because they're putting you under the spell. Here this says nigger. Right? This says nigger, but they like to say Niger. Nigeria. You didn't know that Nigeria was named by this white woman? That's just very interesting, I find it. Anyway, Niger. That could be part of the problem, but Niger, right, means black. Right? Black. That's what it said. Say your definition is black. Surname of the prophet Simeon or Shimon. Notice the origin is of Latin origin. It's Latin. So wait, wait, wait. The, the New Testament, as we have it here, in the King James Version of the Bible, Acts chapter 13, verse 1, they'll tell us it was translated from the Greek, right? So that was translated from the Greek into the English. So it was translated from the Greek into the English. This word that originates in Latin is found there. Just, just check, right? Of Latin origin means black, niger, nigger, right? A Christian, right? This was a Christian, they say. He was a Christian or a Nazarene. We're talking about Simon right there. Now, the point of us pointing this out right here is that nigger or black is in the Bible. And from that word nigger or niger, right? Niger, nigger, niger. And let's say niger, right? Niger. Sounds like something else, right? Niger. When we say nigger, people get a little offended. But we say niger, they feel good. Isn't that interesting how one's feelings, right? How one's feelings can be puppeted and, man and manipulated by how something is said. People get offended if we say nigger. But we say niger, right? Nigger, nigger, right? <laughs> right? Nigger, right? Niger, niger. Yeah, that's it, niger. We say niger, niger, right? Like niger. Then they make the, the G a J. Now, linguistically, that doesn't go on. It only goes on in English. You see, because the end times is much like the first times. You remember Babylon? Babylon was confusion of tongues. Right? That's why the gift of the Holy Spirit was that gift of tongues to discern, not let, you know, not let the, the serpent speech, in that sense, confuse you. This is black. It means black, and that's what Negro means, right? Negro means black. So there we have it in the Bible. Boom, right there. Now, let's go over here. Here we go, Negrum. Negrum, notice that's Latin too. What does it mean? Black, dark, sable, dusky. Dusky, right? Daughters of the dust. Man was made from the dust, right? Right? Was he made from the dust? Dusky, dusk, black, dark, sable, shade. But when we say that, well, Adam, according to what's written there, if we take these definitions to be true, was black, right? Negro, Portuguese. Right? So Negro is from Portuguese, but Portuguese is one of the children of Latin. Right? One of the children of Latin. Then notice it says right here, it says Negro, 1550s, member of a black skin race of Africa. Mm -hmm. A black skin race of Africa. And that brings us down to the noun Negro, right? Negro. Let's just keep that in mind, right? Negro. Here's the word right here, right? The, one of the biggest bywords when it says in the scripture that we will be called, you know, like we will lose our name. Let me show this right here while we're on this, right? The byword, right? We'll, 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 we'll lose our name to a byword, right? And it will call us by bywords right here, right? Deuteronomy 28, 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. You know, aren't people astonished with so-called Negroes? Black people, right? Especially the black people in the Americas. Aren't they astonished? Shama, shama, waste, horror, appallment, waste. Appalment, horror, right? Ruin, consternation. People shaking their head like, what? What? You know what I mean? You have people around the world, even with that byword, will run around with that byword. We're seeing some some Asian, Japanese, and maybe some Chinese, other places, people be, other people who are not so-called black, right? You know, of the African descent that are called Negroes will be playing games with that 
nigga, nigga, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? But they don't do that with nobody else. They don't do that with nobody. <laughs> nobody knows. And thou shall become an astonishment. That's why we have songs like the blues. Nobody knows. A proverb. A proverb. Don't be like them. You know, N words. Proverb. Parable. Right? A proverbial saying. A similitude. A poem. Right? It's, it says sentences of ethical wisdom. Mm. Can you get wisdom? Ethical maxims. And a byword. Right? What's a byword? Shani, shanina. A shanina. Shanina. What's a shanina? A shanina is a sharp word. Sharp is cutting. It's a cutting word. That's the N word for you. The N word is sharp. Now, over in the East, where Mesfin's from in that clip right there, because they have taken education, <laughs> right? Many times, lock, stock, and barrel from the European and haven't done their own fact check. Talking about like the Ethiopians, Africans, and others. They, they don't know this, 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 this world like we know this world. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of them come out here and, you know, be ignoring the warning signs and be ending up in the same sort of situations. You know what I mean? Of course, it's a it's an education, it's a lesson, but it's a hard lesson. Sharp, it's cutting, right? A cutting word. The N word is a cutting word. Something pointed, right? I mean, to say the N word is pointed, right? You know, imagine like uh, they say on the YouTubes and certain platform, you say the word too many times and after a while they, they kind of shadow ban, you. you know, some things you can't say, some things you can't, you know, they, they, they regulate censorship, right? Something very pointed. But notice what it says. This, this is the consequences or curses to the children of Israel. This is one of the proof texts here. A lot of people try to argue about this, but if you read it with any uh, from an objective perspective, it makes sense. Right? Thou shall become an astonishment. Black people, especially here in the Americas and the Caribbean, we're an astonishment. We're a proverb. We're, we're, we're a byword. The N word is that byword among all nations. Among all nations. Right? Because all of them are nations. We're a nation. Well, we're in a nation seeking to become a nation. That's why nationality is such a big subject matter among black people. Right? Nationality. Because we're that only people that's not a nation. Right? A people that has significance and influence and effect, you know, like any other people, maybe greater than most other people, are in the situation we're in. That's that's astonishing. Shamama, right? Whither Yahweh shall lead thee, right? So here it says that Jehovah, right, is him that has led us into this condition, right? right? But like the curse, cause less shall not come. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard, his spots. Mesfin didn't really understand this. Many Ethiopians might not really understand this. You know, what that what that means. You know, it's interesting because when many immigrants come over here, if they have a bad eye, right, towards the lost sheep over here, sometimes they tend to go through the same things. You know, I guess it's like a humbling, right? Or the leopard, his spots. Then may you also do good. Right? Do good that are accustomed to do evil. A lot of people talk about this verse. Oh, you see, it says the Ethiopian changed his skin. <laughs> yeah, so the Ethiopian's black. See, our ancestors back in the 20s, a century ago, the roaring 20s and before, who were doing their research, you know, on who we are, especially post-1865, after the so-called Civil War, Right, that was doing this sort of research, they was making that connection as they studied the documents that white folks never expected us to learn how to read and even master to significant degrees, you know, started to make that connection between, oh, they call us Negro, and then they call, and then the Ethiopians are called Negro. You see, that's why the Zonavan dictionary definition, the, not dictionary, but concordance definition, that's what we say is so erroneous. We said to be weird, right? That's a part of the modern, you know, the social media level COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO, that the old version one and and maybe 1.2 and maybe three, we're on another level. We're like on COINTELPRO XP nowadays. You know, cause a lot of people didn't even peep that. Even many of the Hebrew Israelites, they like that particular um, concordance of ham, but they don't know that it's totally wrong. 
right? And they're going against the wisdom of our ancestors who first recognized and realized the Israeliteness, right, of our captivity. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? A lot of people will quote this like it ends at the question mark. It doesn't. The part that they don't talk about is the second part where it says, then may you also do good. Rastaman, right? Rastafari, right? Do good. The heartbeat, the drums, do good. Do good. May we also do good, right? But check it. That are accustomed to do evil. Who? Me? Who? You? That are accustomed to do evil. So look at this connection about the Ethiopians changing his skin and the leopard his spots. And when we say the Ethiopian, we're using it in a twofold sense at home and abroad, those over there, but also over here under the byword of Negro. All right? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. All right? We could do good, right, in captivity for the other, but when we free, how much good are we doing for ourselves or when we're even relatively a little more free now negrito negrito just want to show you the negrito right that's getting like into the spanish level of it right of negro negrito right a member of any any of a number of dwarfish negro peoples you know if i talk about his majesty's height right mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you know his majesty's height some of the israelites you know, you know how people they have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. You know, just joking, jest. But I found, especially in Central and so Southern Africa and Oceania, those are the ancestral people. You know, if we get into those levels of study, right? The Negritos are less uniformly black than the Negroes. What does that mean? The Negritos are less uniformly black than the Negroes. So if our uniform is black, I got a gray shirt. That's a little bit less uniformly. The upper lip is longer and less, um, what it says, everted. Hairiness is more pronounced. And brachy, selfily is usual. So they go into, th these are these old definitions, right? Now, this is important right here, this treaty that was made by Afro-Americans, you know? And, that were made by Afro-Americans, and through that, right, America had its first treaty with the king of Ethiopia. Notice that flag there. Remember I was saying about the flag? That the so-called state of Israel flag, right, was the flag and is the flag of the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews over here in the diaspora, you know, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the Israelites, you know, once don't want to believe that because you see the other people got it and you wouldn't think that it really came from us first, right? When we tell you about like the people of the book, the scripture, the Israelites are basically, um, what do you like to say, melanated people, you know, black people, you know what I'm saying? When you say black people, but it's offensive to others because people don't understand that even the use of black among black people here in these Americas was very political, right and cause right the system to change significantly that other black peoples or peoples of african descent from the continent could come over here but the first ones that were were able to right come over freely so to speak freely were the ethiopians and this goes all the way back to this time right here to 19 the 1900s right so to see how fast history and they don't teach us this history in school Imagine if the youths could say, wait, you mean our ancestors were doing things like that? And this whole agreement between the two countries, right, was concerning commerce. And it was black Americans, ones in the Americas, even ones from the Caribbean and the Americas that went over there to reason. I think this is where the story of the shipload of gold, that when Minulik understood the situation, right, of the Israelites over here, they sent a shipload of gold. And somehow America appropriated that. And, you know, that's that's one of those things they should have on those shows where they're looking for secrets and hidden mysteries. You know, what happened to Menelik's gold? You know what I mean? And see how well that they, that they do, they investigate that. All right? Now, here's another face of the Ethiopians over here. Now, see, this is what's interesting. This is for the Mesfin ones. All right? Not Mesfin, you know, maybe Mesfin can be... Well, we would say maybe he can be askew. Some of y'all are going to be a hot on him. How dare he say what he say, right?
but he's being educated over here. He's getting caught up and probably he don't really have, you know, um, a good rabbi. You know what I mean? He don't have, you know, many of us to kind of school. Like if we, if we went over to Ethiopia, right? Wouldn't, or Africa, anywhere in Africa, anywhere in the world, wouldn't we be wise to let the people who know the lay of the land teach us? Show us how things go? You know, not go over there. We just know everything. We just bogart it. No, you know, wouldn't it be wise to do that? So here's another face of the Negro, right? Another face of the Negro. I know this video here. Okay, we're at this particular point. Let's just go through this New Orleans, Negro, Ethiopian serenaders. What we're making is the Negro Ethiopian historical connection. The Negro Ethiopian historical connection. Right? People can play and pretend in social or anti-social media today, right? But that's just a psyops. That's just the Lucifer effect, you know, that's going on. Look it up, right? Authorized edition, music of the... Now, who is this? This is supposed to be portraying black people, musicians, singers, players. Remind me of the song where it said, Sing us one of those songs of Zion by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. We wept when we remember Zion. Right? But Willie Lynchism, how to make a slave has caused cause the black man to forget these things. You know what I'm saying? Up until the time, you know, that time, right? The, the 20s. The 20s was significant for us. We need to remember the roaring 20s, right? And those key significant ones and ones. So here's some more of this, you know, this is the typical image of black folks even today. You know, think about it for a moment. Musicians. You know what I mean? Still... You know, it's like, play us one of those songs of Zion, right? Notice that it was the ones in the black church that first came out to churches. And even up until like the Whitney Houston's and probably others, well, the gospel music is now on the par as it used to be. Ever since, you know, ones came out to church and went into the secular music and flip mode church songs into love songs and everything. Powerful music, beautiful music, you know what I mean? But we can see the flip. The flip mode was going on. Ethiopian, a native or inhabitant of Ethiopia, also in a general sense, a Negro or black man. See, the reason why we started out with this and we returned to this again, we had to give you some of the evidence out there, you know, both pro and and against. Like the Zona Van um, concordance is definitely against. But that dictionary we just showed you right there, that's 1916. That's interesting. I think 1916 dictionary, right, that we had showed you is coming forward. Then we get the UNIA, right? Garvey Club, Inc., the UNIA, right? And also we get the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews Connection, which becomes the, you say, the, the, the grandparents of like the One West and the Hebrew Israelite movement of the 70s, from 70 AD, right? The Universal Negro. Right, Improvement Association. But yet what Garvey, the black, the Ethiopian baptizer, was baptizing, you know, the black, the Afro-Americans. Let me use the term they use. They use the term Afro-American. I'm using the term, not Afro. That comes in a little after that. Then we get to the 70s. Some attribute to Jackson with the African-American. But we have the Afro. I think we need to return to the Afro. You know, there was a wisdom of our ancestors. Look at what they was able to achieve. But we then have to look at how they identify themselves, right? Because, you know, know thyself, right? All of the law. Now, His Majesty here, you probably come across this before, right? Is This is from, um, what's that thing called? Meet the Press. You probably see the video out there. His Majesty, people... They quote what His Majesty says here, but they quote a little bit out of context. His Majesty is asked about should the white people in South Africa get used to being under like a black people, the black man or something like that. And His Majesty, as he's hearing the question, he's like shaking his head. And before the translator can even begin to translate, he already understands the question and begins to respond. And this is what he said. I must say that black and white as forms of speech, as means of judging mankind or even in the sense of condemning people, should be eliminated from human society. Human beings are precisely the same, whatever color, race, creed, or national origin they may be. Right? As a general as a general truth, this objectively is true. 
right? Then we know the until the philosophy, right? Which is majesty, I think on record, said at least twice. One at Stanford University and the other at the United Nations, right? Now, this speech, we even have some white rosters or white people quoting this sometimes, trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do, but it doesn't work. You know, it says the color of a man's skin is of no more significant than the color of his eyes. If people are using the black, especially as it has been used to break down walls and open up doors over here, right? Not just for black people, not for people just of African descent, but even for other nationalities, right? How many nationalities come to the West and use the laws Right and 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 other legislation that was because of the black people, so-called Negro struggle in the Americas and the Caribbean, right? But especially in the Americas and even to some extent in in the UK and England, right? So as Matsy right here is talking about this right here, we can tell who he's speaking to and what he's speaking about. He says that until that day, the dream of lasting peace and world citizenship and the rule of international morality, right? Okay, um, yeah, yeah. We remain but a fleet illusion to be pursued but never attained. The part that they left out, I, I, you see what they left out, right? We Africans will fight if necessary, which shows that he is defending, you know, the down press against those who down press them and he's destroying their ideology. Right with word sound, as it says of the Messiah, he shall slay them with the words of his mouth. Right there, we go, Raytheic, and Amawi Hala Selassie. Right, conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the the Rastafari of all Rastafari. Look at His Majesty. What what is said of His Majesty here? Emperor Selassie links Negro with Africans throughout the world. Now this is the King of Kings of Ethiopia. Now I don't know when Mesfin did what he did. I think that was in the 50s, right? And His Majesty visited America in 1954, if I'm correct. So it's kind of interesting. Maybe His Majesty came over to correct this misunderstanding, you know? And he did, right? And this is the fuller article right here. You know, we could go through it, you know what I mean? But it's interesting, even right here, the connection of us, which is Ethiopia stretch off our hands to God, right? The great African continent of which Ethiopia is proud to be a part, right? So his majesty is setting the record straight. Now it's obvious that Mesfin in that clip is an Amhara, right? But he doesn't seem to be holding to the teaching of his majesty, to the, you know what I mean? The king, you know what I mean? Our godfather and king of kings has spoken. Why are you speaking contrary? Right now, as we said, there were some true things that Messon was trying to say, right? But yet, overall, it falls short of the glory of what the King of Kings represents. Selassie's special message for Negroes, right? Special message for the black people. You know, we was called colored, we was called blacks. So we have to recognize that this is a testimony of that particular time. Direct message to Negro Americans. See, the press called us Negro Americans. We began to call ourselves Afro Americans. Then later on, about 30 years later, when black becomes more popular, then we get Afro American, and then we get the Afros, and then we get African Americans. But this was given by the emperor, the king of kings, in the first exclusive interview he granted since arriving here May 23rd. May, it was 1954. 1954. Um, he says, my message to the colored people, at least the translation says, my message to the colored people of the United States is that they continue to press forward, right, with determination, right, their social and intellectual, our what? Our social and intellectual advancement, meeting all obstacles with Christian courage and tolerance, confident in the certainty of the eventual triumph of justice and equality through the world. So he's speaking to Israel over here. And see how he's speaking to true ethnic Israel, Negro Israel, right? We the Ethiopian Hebrews. So this is also another testimony here, right? This is, this is the man, right, even before Garvey, 
right? Garvey would not be the man that he was, especially without that key significant message that this man, Reverend James Morris Webb, where he spoke and preached of the Negro universal king coming to rule the world. As a reverend, right, and the man of the scripture and understanding the scripture, he made the connection, right, the prophetic connection that came to pass, even the crowning of Ketamawi Hala Selassie, right? So his works is very, very important as well, right? And we can see that they use this Negro terminology very, very much. Okay, here's what we're going to touch on right here, just to seal up right around here. Now, this is from that 1916 Webster's Dictionary, all right, where it says Ethiopian, right? You see Ethiop, it says an Ethiopian, Ethiop, right? Ethiopian. Now, I know many would say this comes from Greek, right? It comes from Greek, but actually it comes from Tobia, right? Tobia, Tobia. Obia, right? It comes from the name of the king, right? And the name of those people, the Tobians. It's the Ethiopian from the Latin and from the Greek, so forth and so on, is just how Europeans many times, like we know Chinese people, I think they, they say it's Shino, Sino, Sino, right? Sin, Sino people, but they call them Chinese. So we know that Chinese, basically, in China come from Sina or Shina, right? Shinar, right? So Ethiopian right here, of or pertaining to Ethiopia, designating or pertaining to one of the five divisions of mankind. So the European, their scholars, scientists, and maybe to some degree pseudoscientists were on this fivefold division of, of, of mankind or humanity, the Ethiopian race. So, so understand the significance to those of our ancestors then who did those great works then, right? That all we can do is nostalgicize on. Once we understand, well, what, what mind say, you know what I mean? What mentality, what thought, what truth, what wisdom they was working with, right? We can do what they did and even do greater as he will do, y'all willing. As now used, the term includes the Negro, Bantu, Negrito peoples of Africa, together with their descendants. Uh-oh, wait. The Negro, Bantu, and Negrito peoples of Africa, together with their descendants. Who are the descendants? The darker races of Oceania, and usually the Australian, and the extinct Tasmanian blacks. Why do you think it was called Tasmanian Devils? See, this is this is in the Europeans or the white man's white the uh, racist white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and the other racist. This is from their their Ein Hara, right? Their evil eye, right? The Tas remember the Tasmanian was the people that was exterminated, but here they're telling us the Tasmanian who are extinct, the Tasmanian blacks. Right? Then it says Ethiopian, a native of Ethiopia is the first. Right? So in those times, going back to the, the turn of the 20th century, the early part of the 20th century, this is the point of reference that our ancestors who did those great works, even the Ethiopian World Federation and other great works that were done, right, was doing those great works. Even the beginning of that repatriation was the beginning of Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford and others. Firstly, it was a native of Ethiopia. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Amos 9 and 7, yeah. Right? Secondarily, it was a Negro. Right? Then it says, Black Amor. Black Amor, a member of the Ethiopian race. Then look under here. So we know that the Ethiopian and Negro have that comedic or Hamitic relationship. But notice this, look at the language, Ethiopic is called Ethiopian, secondarily designating or relating to the language of, now here they say Semitic conquerors of Abyssinia, the Ethiopic language. And this is what Mesfin, you know, was seeking to articulate in the way that he articulated, but got confused on these modern terminologies by saying that they're not Negro, right? Not understanding right, that the predominant definition of this, right, links us and them, and this is what the king of kings spoke to, right? Now, we have a few more on that, but 
you know, not to go into much more on that right there. This is the same quote. Let's just seal up with what His Majesty said, right? What His Majesty said, warning the Amharas, right? Now, here we are in selected speeches, right? Selected speeches, and we're at the public health graduation in Gondar. A very, very important speech here, but we're going to begin down here, right? Now, this is dated from May 18th. 1959. Now notice, his majesty was in America in 1954. Then he returns in 1959. He's speaking here. Now he visits Jamaica, right? Benjamin, right? After he visits Judah first here in North America, he visits Benjamin, Jaman, Yaman in 66. Just so we can see the timeline, the real timeline. It says right here, it says, now that you are to begin the medical and health profession, Right, so it's magically educating the people, right, with science, you know, and technology, right, but also with morals, right, and values, true values, Christ like, holy, godly values. Now that you are to begin the medical and health profession, we recommend that you work diligently. Let's go, this is on the higher education, diligently for, let's see, for treatment and cure alone is not enough for a country prevention you see what it says it says prevention is also necessary so remember the warning that his majesty you know the warning that his majesty had you know given to the amhara right he says the amhara race right now races these terminology we need to touch on what does these terminologies really mean some people say race is not in the bible but if you like to find well where's race in the bible and how it's defined you know stay tuned you know hit us up on the comment you want to check that out you know or rastafari jews at gmail.com but here's what he says to them horror race he says them horror race must know that it has an obligation, right? Even though we said the black race, it don't include just black people from one neighborhood, from up north, from down south, from east coast. So it's all of us, right? The Amhara race must know that it has an obligation on its part to work in the technical field. That's science and technology in the technical field, no matter at what level, no matter at what level. You see what I'm saying? no matter at what level, that means humble oneself, to preserve the heritage of one's honor and culture, it's praiseworthy. That's why I said that Mesfin in that clip, he was saying some things that were reflecting true and proven, right, historical and ancient, you know, facts. You know what I'm saying? But, as his majesty says here, to exceed the limits may prove detrimental may prove detrimental, right? May prove what? Detrimental. So he's warning them horrors right here that they have an obligation on their part to work in the technical field. You see what I'm saying? No matter at what level, right? This is 1959, right? To preserve the heritage of one's honor and culture is praiseworthy. If you've come in from, you know, across the seas, you know what I mean? And come forward, return back to the ancient homeland, southern Judah lands. That this is good, right? And it's praiseworthy, but to exceed the limits may prove detrimental. And you can pick that up in the extended Mesfin, you know, um, I don't know, Mesfin interview, right? Just to seal this up right here, 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 right? Let's go right here. We have ventured to say this because it has come to our knowledge. So Adamawi House Selassie is speaking to the Ethiopians at home over there in the 50s, late 50s, and particularly to the Amhara, right? The Amhara. You're going you're gonna to hear about them. Well, you should be looking them up in the news. You know, we have to become more aware about what's going on in Ethiopia. You know, like it was said to Superman, do not like you know um interfere like in human affairs you know what i mean don't interfere you know we're not to interfere in their politics you know what i mean because we're not a part of that you know like just like we have our own politics over here and we beg others not to mess around with it or you know speak against what they don't know we should not 
do likewise. But his majesty, the King of Kings, our God, Father, and King of Kings, says, We have ventured to say this because it has come to our knowledge that there exists here scorn for labor. Uh-oh. Scorn for labor. So someone who has a scorn for labor, they can make somebody else, like enslave somebody else to do their work. They probably would do so. Oh, I mean, that's part of what the Oromos have been saying, right? Just, just to look at the evidence as objectively as possible. We have come after having laid the foundation stones for the establishment of a textile factory, a hydroelectric plant and a bridge in the development of highways in order to help in the advancement of the people of Begimda, Begimda, right? Begimda and Gojam. Unless the people benefit through work. Louis says, unless the people benefit through what? Through work, right? Through work. Six days thou shalt work and the seventh day is the Shabbat. Unless the people benefit through work, our efforts and thoughts will have been in vain. Was that the attempt? in the godless and creeping coup against Kedemar Hala Selassie, right? Because there's the enemies foreign, but there's also domestic, right? Is this what they were seeking to do to make the works of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Hala Selassie the first, the king of kings of Ethiopia in vain? They will also have violated the wish of the Almighty. Uh-oh, right? So the wish of the Almighty is the wish of the king of kings. Check. They will have also violated the wish of the Almighty, El Shaddai, that by one's toil he must earn his living. Much cannot be accomplished in the pursuit of spiritual advancement. You see, much cannot. So as Matthew is balancing people about science or spirituality, hear the words of the King of Kings. Much cannot be accomplished in the pursuit of spiritual advancement, let alone that of material gains without labor, without labor, right? But they call his majesty labor, labor, and Amharic means teeth, right? Learn, work, learn, work, learn, and work. So his majesty sent them to, you know, um, get learned, right? You know, to learn themselves, you know what I'm saying? And then they were supposed to come home to do work. But what did they come home to do? Right? We have established community education, community education, so that both the youth and the adult, the, the young and the old may learn, learn. You see, a, a real anointed, a, a real holy man or, or a good person or what is proper to do. You see, education and the quest for knowledge stop only at the grave. This is May 18th, 1959. So here's what his majesty said, you know, to them horror. You know what I mean? You know, he said like, you know, treatment, this part where he says, he says, now that you are to begin the medical and health. What do we always hear about like in Africa and parts of Ethiopia? People need medicine and health. Right? These things have been given by the Almighty to us to have that knowledge. We recommend that you work diligently for treatment and cure alone is not enough for a country. You know, people want to say like, we want to solve the problems, but don't become the problem. You know what I mean? Don't be the problem or make the problem come about. He says prevention is also necessary. So this was a preventative, what his majesty was saying, but sadly, unfortunately, these words seem to have fallen on deaf ears for over 40 years. The Amhara race must know that it has an obligation on its part to work in the technical field, no matter at what level, to preserve, to preserve the heritage of one's honor and culture is praiseworthy. It's worthy of praise, but to exceed the limits may prove detrimental. So the thing we must ask ourselves here on the outro is uh, how could we exceed the limits? What are the limits? You know what I mean? What are the limits? Right? And how have the limits been exceeded? Right? And what can be done to correct that abuse? Right? Above all, we must avoid the pitfalls of tribalism. If we are divided among ourselves on tribal lines, we open our doors to foreign intervention and its potentially harmful consequences. The word of Karamawi, 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 Hala Salasi, Nagus, and Neges. 
is that Ethiopia? Yeah, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Yes, I. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom.